Hello, uh, this is G. Rodman. Today we're going to have a decent playthrough of a Commodore 64 early title called Dragon's Den. Uh, this may showcase a bit how Commodore was neither excellent nor terrible at, uh, as a first party game publisher. Um, they made some competent titles. A uh, few of them were really impressive. Uh, some of them were decent. I would say that some of the arcade conversions in the early days were maybe among the better available. Anyway, this is a pretty simple title, Dragon's Den. Uh, I first encountered it as a cartridge brought home from work uh, by my dad who worked at Commodore. I don't think we ever had a manual. I just had to figure it out myself. Later, a friend in the neighborhood, uh, in our copying sessions, I got a copy from him on floppy disk. I was initially pretty confused as to why I was both on floppy disk and cartridge, and what was the difference? Uh, much later in life, I realized dumping cartridges to floppy disks uh, for pirating reasons was a really common activity. Anyway, um, okay, so this game is pretty uh, straightforward. Oh, right, you can, you can choose what kind of flap you want, normal, strong, or weak. I'm gonna leave it on normal. And... That's that, that letter in the upper left. And you can choose, okay, that's two player or one player. And okay, up is what the start level is. I'm gonna start on the first level. Okay, let's go back to normal strength and start. So I think that what uh, really appealed to me about this game as a kid is because it had sort of decent music, which of course is just a very crude transliteration of some classical pieces, but I don't know, I like the tunes. Uh, the control scheme is quite like Joust, the uh, arcade classic. You can press the button to flap, um, and if you don't flap, you, you start falling. Although, uh, unlike Joust, I don't think there's a big deal about hitting things from slightly from the top. It's mostly just... Touch things with your lance, and they will go away. There's actually a little bit of a hitbox in the legs of your horse, where if things hit just the front of your legs, they tend to get destroyed. Um, it's a little finicky, though, so I don't... best not to rely on it. So we have uh, a series of four phases, all pretty simple. Um, we're on the third phase now, where we want to... Uh, I, I, I don't... it's a little unclear. We want to kill the dragon, but first we have to hatch the egg. So I don't know, kind of, like, why we we're trying to hatch the egg. It seems a little counterproductive. Feels like we should just kill the dragon when it's still inside the egg, but, you know, maybe... Maybe the egg is impervious. Uh, on the first level, the dragon just kind of flies around, if I remember correctly. Uh, and you have to hit him four times. He goes through various colors. Uh, and that's victory. We've completed one lap through the game. I feel like this whole segment between levels comes from Pac-Man, but I don't know if it predates Pac-Man. Um, the little jokies interludes. And this is, of course, where my uh, appreciation of the game hits its peak because we get the Hall of the Mountain King playing right from the start. It's kind of too set. It's, it's kind of too bad to um, finish knocking these wyverns or pterodactyls or whatever they are out of their caves because then the music stops, which is kind of a shame. Of course, I could listen to a better recording of. Um, that classical music <laughs> if I wanted to but there's some I don't know I've always found something appealing about um, uh, computer generated music anyway this section has controls where you can speed up and slow down by pressing left or right and of course button to, to flap and in the early levels it's a bit trivial um, but you do have to choose reasonable speeds these flying crawl blades oh there you got to see a hoof stomp action these flying crawl blades i think 
will kill the moths, if those are moths, as well as you. So if you fly into them, you'll die, and I think they will kill the moths if, if you... I don't think they add any meaningful difficulty, though, to the game. I think they're... they feel more decorative to me. Uh, the majority of your points will come from bonus time. So, completing levels quickly if you care about score is definitely the um, most important thing. Uh, for me, I always cared about getting as far as I could in games. Though, paradoxically, in a game like this... Oops. In a game like this where you um, can start on higher levels, I always found it to be much more... I, I, I found much more accomplished when um, completing levels from the beginning. Like, the number of levels completed always felt way more important to me than the, the distance I got into the game. Part of that may be... Oh, you can't go back. Oh, you can't go back. Part of that may be that... Um, these the levels in this game don't change very much. They get very trivially harder, and that's pretty much it for Dragon's Den.